Hey, BC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video response to uh, Mr. Billy Crayoni's last thread, uh, one he put up a couple days ago, which is a great question, one I definitely had to chime in on, because he was asking about one of my favorite uh, genres slash decades of that genre, which was your top ten favorite albums from 80s rap and hip-hop. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, that, that whole time period, you know, from uh, early 80s right up until about maybe 92, 93, to me that's just like when the world of hip-hop was incredible. Everything after that can pretty much, you know, go do something that I won't tell it to do on camera. But, uh, so, so I definitely want to kind of jump in on, on this thread and kind of share a few things with you. As always, I cheated, but... I, I narrowed it down to 13. There was a lot more and a lot of good stuff I left out, but I narrowed it down to 13. So I'm going to go three honorable mentions and then my 10 albums. So my three honorable mentions, favorite hip-hop albums from the 80s. I'm going to go number one, Ice-T's Power from 1988. Uh, very, very good album. This was kind of one of the the early gangster albums, if you will, where that the whole idea behind a lot of that storytelling came into play, but it was still nowhere as bad as, you know, what things got to in the mid-90s. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, one of Ice-T's best works there. Songs like uh, Drama, Grand Larceny, Power, I mean, some really, really good stuff on here. I'm a big Ice-T fan. Next honorable mention, I'm going to go with Heavy D and the Boys. This is Big Time. And this is from 19, uh, 1989. Um, you know, songs on here like We Got Our Own Thing, Somebody For Me, definitely the biggest hits, and of course More Bounce To The Ounce, which is that sample from Roger and Zapp's More Bounce To The Ounce. But that was also a really, really good album. So that definitely has been an honorable mention. And my last honorable mention goes to Dana Dane with Fame. And, uh, you know, th th this was kind of on the, you know, that same type of slick Rick tip. I mean, he, he had a very unique delivery in, in his in his rapping and so forth. And, you know, this is just kind of more, more of the fun stuff. This is more of the, the, the fun rap that was out back then, in my opinion. So that's definitely a good honorable mention. Now, my top ten, in no particular order, but I am going to save the last three that I think were probably the best three albums, but the first ones here in no particular order. But my top ten favorite hip-hop albums of the 80s. I gotta agree with Mr. Crayoni on this one, Run DMC, King of Rock, I mean that's a classic, it's really one of the first albums that started taking hip-hop to another level. Um, you know, songs like, well, King of Rock, uh, Can You Rock It Like This, and You're Blind. You can't see, you need to wear sunglasses like DMC. I <laughs> love that album. And this, I have all the studio albums by this band, so I had to pick, or this group, I should say, so I had to pick one, and I went with Fat Boys, self-titled Fat Boys. And I chose this one over their first album because this has a song, self-titled Fat Boys, which I think is probably their best, best song ever. Yeah, I love that song. So that's Fat Boys. Another one you got to throw in there. Eric B. and Rakim. Follow the Leader. That's a must, too. I mean, I'll follow the Leader, Microphone Thing, Lyrics of Fury. I mean, just all kinds of great stuff on here. And next, probably going with the guy here who I think is probably the... Um, the one guy who I really feel did gangster rap, if you will, properly. Um, I guess what I mean by that is some people will seem like they just got on the record to cuss and talk trash for the sake of cursing and talk trash. But when you listen to this guy's records, it was more like you were really actually experiencing his true lifestyle in a way that he was sharing it, not to make money, but just really kind of sharing the deep, deeper levels of it. I just always got that impression from what he did even with some of the foul stuff that he might have said. And I'm talking about the one and only Too Short. Um, again, very unique delivery style. 
Um, he was definitely known for beating down your trunk, too. I mean, if you were 16 years old, had a $1,000 car with $4,000 of stereo equipment in the back, you had a too short cassette in your car somewhere. <laughs> because that's, that's one thing he was definitely good for. But, I mean, he was a, uh, I mean, great artist, great rapper, and just, this is definitely one of my favorite albums by, by him, which is Life Is Too Short. Next, this is another one I have to agree with uh, Billy on, UTFO. Definitely one of the, the first rap groups I can ever remember hearing. Um, you know, songs like Leader of the Pack, Bite It, Roxanne, Lisa Lips. I mean, the real Roxanne. That was just beats and rhymes. This was just a really, really good hip-hop album. Kind of the early days of hip-hop, too. Well, I guess this came out in, like, 85. But still, they were kind of one of the one of the bands that really brought me to hip-hop. Uh, this album here, which I would still say, potentially, this could be the greatest hip-hop album of the 80s. I mean, you could easily argue that. And, and it's another one that Billy pulled up, Houdini's Escape. I mean, this this album freaking brought it. I mean, it, it brought it in every which way. I mean, not only were the lyrics great, but there was a, a lot of funk mixed in to what they did. Um, so it was very, very, I don't want to say dance-friendly type hip-hop, but it, it was stuff that definitely made you have to get out of your seat. I mean, five minutes of funk, freaks come out at night, friends, we, we are Houdini. I mean, just, just slamming tracks. <laughs> That's a great album right there. Another one, um, which I think it's overlooked a lot of times because most of his success came afterwards, but MC Hammer's first album, Let's Get It Started. Again, every single track on this album, it was a very, very good track. Um, you know, this is also the first concert I ever saw was MC Hammer in uh, Oak Town 357. But, you know, turn this mother out, let's get it started, ring them, uh, pump it up. They put me in the mix. I mean, there was a lot of really good songs on this. And again, it was one of those albums that just didn't get a lot of notoriety, if you will, because MC Hammer really didn't make it big until his next album when, you know, Pray and Can't Touch This and all this stuff became so mainstream. But really, really good hip-hop album. And then these next three are going to be my, my three favorite albums of the 80s, hip-hop albums. Public Enemy, Takes a Nation a Million to Hold Us Back. I just showed this a little while ago in my, uh, well, that favorite Sides video. I think I picked Side 2 on this album. But again, it's just Public Enemy at the peak of their game, in my opinion. Bring the noise, Rebel Without a Pause, all that great stuff. Now, I can't decide which one of these to call the greatest album of the 80s. So I'm just going to give it a, a tie for first place. There's no way I can really distinguish between the two. Number one is going to be EPMD's Strictly Business. Um, I like this album so much because I'm, I'm definitely all about the old school funk, especially your, um, maybe not even funk as you think about it in terms of 70s funk, but more like Roger and Zap type funk, like electric funk, that type of thing, uh, voice box kind of funk, and, um, I mean, EPMD was all about that, I mean, all the samples they did on here from just some of the greatest funk tracks of all time, so this album from top to bottom was also a really, really great album, so that's definitely one of my favorites, or tied for my favorite album of the of the 80s. And the other one that goes along with it, which is this one right here, the DOC, No One Can Do It Better. Uh, kind of tragic, too. He had some type of accident or illness or something that happened to him, and uh, he lost his voice, um, which was kind of sad because he was, I know he was on pace to throw down some serious stuff. Matter of fact, if you ever listen to uh, uh, Dre's... Um, chronic album, you hear that like some of the talking segments in between there's someone talking like in a very scratchy type voice or whatever and uh, it's it's the DOC. I mean that's just kind of how messed up. I don't Again, I don't remember if it was an accident or illness or what but this album again is just one that when I was in high school, everybody had. I mean, everyone. It's just a, again a perfect album from front to back and it's one of those albums that's so good that I've always said for the longest time, this album could have came out anywhere over a 15, 20 year time period, 
and still been kind of fresh and right up to date with everything that was going on in hip hop. I mean, it was, it was just that perfect of an album. Uh, songs like It's Funky Enough, Let the Bass Go, uh, Beautiful But Deadly, which was kind of a, you know, some metal mixed in with hip hop there. Uh, the Formula, again, talk about beating down your trunk. Perfect hip hop album, absolutely perfect. So again, these are the two I would have to make make my number one or my two number ones of the 80s. So anyway, just wanted to jump back in on that thread really quick. Uh, as always, let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you guys soon. All right, take care, BC.